Hi, Phil Susan here, back with another exciting episode of Bass Tips and Tricks for you. Uh, it's been uh, a while, I've actually been out on the road, so I haven't had a chance to make one of these videos and I wanted to make one real quick. So I want to try to uh, give you a little bit of something following on from the last um, tr uh, tip and trick we had before. We were talking about pick playing before, as you may recall. And one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today was the importance of hammer-ons and pull-offs. Now, hammer-ons and pull-offs are used extensively by guitar players, but they're also used by bass players. Bass players use them to a great uh, advantage as well. And in essence, I want to show you kind of how it's used and what you can do to start using it. Um, so a hammer-on, of course, simply means that you're taking a note and you're hammering your finger onto the uh, onto the string a couple of frets away uh, and creating a note. So if I was to play a D for example on my A string with my first finger like this and then hammer my third finger down onto the seventh fret on the A string which of course would be an E I would get this and that's a hammer on. Now when you first do it you're going to be doing something that sounds like this it's going to sound quite soft and with some uh, practice and the more you do it you can get it to sound much much firmer so you can have and in fact you can even get the note to ring quite a lot um, now a pull-off is kind of the opposite of that I'm going to go to the seventh fret on the D string and I'm going to play an A with my third finger which is here and then I'm going to pull my finger off. Now, when I pull it off, you'll hear that it defaults back to the G note, being the fifth fret of the D string. However, what I want to do is I want to go one step further and I actually want to use this third finger to almost pluck the string. It's very strange. So, I don't know if you can see that. I'm pressing down and I'm pressing it down and then allowing it to pull back off. And that is much more effective. That sounds pretty cool, right? So if I want to play a simple note, a simple line which goes... There are three ways I can play it. I can either play it by picking the, the, the each individual note. which sounds quite staccato, and that's what I would do if I wanted a staccato effect, but if I wanted more of a flowy legato effect, then I would use the hammer-on pull-offs. This hand here, I can either use downbeats or I can use upbeats or I can use a combination of both. If I use a combination of a downbeat and then an upbeat, or a down pick and then an up pick, I would get... And that sounds pretty cool. The, th the third way you can play is to actually pick each note using the hammer-on. So that's a very specialized technique and maybe we should talk a bit more about that in the future where I will go... And it's very percussive and it's very um, loud. So this hammer-on technique, how, how can you use that in a line? Well, let's say that you're playing... Um, Let's say you're playing a funk line and your, your line is... I could use my hammer-ons to play like that. Um, there is something else going on under current, something under the, under the water, and you might have picked up on it. Um, the essence of funk playing is really... Uh, to play on the one and to do anything else that you want in between, but always to come back on the one. So if if I'm if I'm hearing a tempo such as this, and I'm thinking of one, two, three, four, then I've got my one. So I'm coming back to the one. What's really going in, on in my head is quite different, though. I'm actually counting sixteens. So I'm counting, drummers will be familiar with this counting method, the 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a... So it's a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a... is 1, 2, 3, 
four, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. This is going on like a sort of subliminal clock in my head the whole time. It's probably why I look so confused most of the time. But what it's making me do is it's making me put notes in on those beats without having to think too much. So when I play a simple line such as. I'm actually playing, I'm putting in dead notes, all kinds of stuff. I'm going. So that's really what's going on. And if you can start to think in terms of breaking everything down into 16s, I think you can really add a lot of incredible um, depth to very simple lines um, or very complicated lines as well. Um, let me give you an example. Um, in, in Last in Line, we play Rainbow in the Dark, which is not a Last in Line song. It's, it's a Dio song, of course, but Vivian Campbell and, and Vinnie Appice wrote it. Um, and so we, we do play it every night. And if we didn't play it, we'd probably get lynched or something. But the basics of that line are uh, as follows. It's, it's, it's in A, so it's... So that's the basic part. Now what I do is I'll embellish it a lot and I'll add a lot more percussion to it. And the percussion is in the form of those 16th notes. So I might play it like this. and lots of elements from the 16th notes. You hear that? So what I'm doing is I'm looking at these 16 notes and I'm just throwing in odd notes here and there that sound pretty cool, or if not even notes, just dead notes. Dead notes are fantastic. They add percussion to your playing. And very often, someone will come along and play a bass line and they'll say, okay, see if you can tell what this line is. And they'll go. And on its own, you might be scratching your head and saying, it sounds kind of familiar, but I really don't know what it is. When you put the percussion in, it's almost like you're playing with a drummer as well. Instantly, you hear the song right there. So, lots of fantastic stuff. Try these hammer-ons. I mean, try them. You know, try them in all different ways. Try hammering on with the first and third, first and second, second and third, third and fourth. I had to remember what this finger was called. Third finger and fourth, <laughs> or first and fourth. And uh, same thing with the pull-offs. So, you know, or, those are tricky to do because they do require some, a little bit of effort, but it's well worth it. Trust me, you're going to love it. Um, 
and we can talk in the future about pentatonics, but when you come to doing your pentatonics as well, and combining your hammer-ons and pull-offs, you can really get some fantastic, some fantastic sounds, you know, using a combination of those, and especially if you wanted to kind of solo, you want to put fills in, you want to do stuff like that. Fills, like me. Anyway, um, all right, that's it for today. I uh, hope that some of this has been useful. And please, as always, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. And uh, please leave some questions. If you have any questions, I'm really here to, to help out and answer and hopefully help you uh, become a better bass player. And uh, that's it. Hope you have a great time playing your instrument. Happy bass playing. I guess that's what we say. Happy bass playing. There you go. Happy bass playing. See you next time.